Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a review that's kind of interesting. Um, it is a review of the wines of Agricola Tiberia out of uh, the Abruzzo region. And also we had a dinner at um, uh, La Quartieria, which is a really nice restaurant in town. So we're kind of doing both the um, review of the wines and also the restaurant. So this is a very neat winery. I had the pleasure of drinking with Christiana Tibera, who is the winemaker there. Um, Ricardo Tabera, her uh, dad, uh, established a winery in 2000. They're dedicated to planting indigenous grape varietals. Um, they are um, quite instrumental in the comeback of the uh, Trebbiano de Bruzzi uh, grape and also another grape, grape called uh, Picorino. And so um, they're doing some magnificent things also with the Montepulciano grape in de Bruzzi. And so um, it was a really interesting um, wine dinner for me because I wasn't that familiar and I had the, you know, preconceived idea that uh, Bruzzo is really just a valley region that makes kind of valley wines or kind of bulk wines. But I could, through this tasting, I think I learned a lot about the region. Let's start with the Picorino 2023. It's the Colin Pascaresi uh, from Tavera. Tabera and their family are uh, kind of responsible for the um, kind of keeping this grape uh, from from extinction. And so, um, you know, they are kind of the leading uh, producers of this grape type. And, um, you know, it would have been um, extinct if they hadn't come in and uh, saved some of the vines on their properties. Um, it's a really distinct grape, grape pecorino, really neat. Um, it's it's not as acidic as Sauvignon Blanc, but uh, but it's kind of mid mid weight, so I like that. I love the texture of the wine, um, and so it's a really good food wine. It kind of reminds me a little bit about Pinot Blanc, but more flavor. So my notes are um, it's got a floral and orange peel on the aroma. It's minerally with citrus and tropical fruits on the flavor, um, but it's kind of a cross between I would say Sauvignon and Pinot Blanc, but it's neither. It's a little bit more uh, tasty than um, Pinot Blanc, and it doesn't have the sharp acidity of Sauvignon Blanc. So really good uh, food wine. My rating 87 points. The wine dinner was at La Quarcia, which is a really uh, magnificent Italian uh, restaurant on West 4th. Um, so they paired everything magnificently. So the uh, pecorino was um, paired with an antipasto plate. As you can see, beautiful cured meats, a little bit of a pate, some olives, some pickles. Um, excellent um, pairings with the meats. Um, and also the pickles kind of brought something something to it also. And with every bite, there was a little difference. Um, it really changed the wine and um, either made it a little bit sweeter or a little bit heavier. Um, so it was a really um, successful pairing. Next course was paired with two of their Trebbiano Debruzzi wines. So the first was their kind of basic entry-level wine, which is Trebbiano de Bruzzi 2023. It's on sale at BC Liquor Stores this month, I think at $22 around, so great price for this. And again, I had misconceptions. I thought I knew Trebbiano, but tre I most of the Trebbiano people drink is from Tuscany, which is kind of really light and dilute. Um, not that interesting in my opinion, but Trebbiano de Bruzzi is a totally different grape type, um, and it's tastes totally different and um, it was again almost dis extinct until the Tiberio family uh, got involved and saved some of the vines and now it's grown uh, quite extensively in um, the uh, Bruzzi region. So um, it's kind of like again a very unique grape type. Um, they can, Some people compare it to Chablis because it's got good acidity and it's not oaked but I don't think Chablis has as much um, fruit uh, flavors as this wine so it's like got some tangerine and apricot flavors it's minerally and has herbs on the aftertaste so I really enjoy this it's a little bit more substantial than uh, or way more substantial than um, Trebriano from Tuscany and really flavorful I really like this wine great food wine my rating 88 points next wine is their flagship uh 
Trebbiano de Bruzzi wine, which is called uh, Fonte Canale, is their 2019. This is a really a magnificent wine, fairly high end, kind of equivalent to premier Grand Cru Burgundy. Um, very surprised about this wine. And to me, this was the wine of the night and really a, a wine lover's wine, um, one of the great uh, Italian white wines in the world. And I love the compare and contrast with their basic wine. This was more intensity, same, fairly similar in terms of taste profile, but way more intensity and longer aftertaste. So my notes was it was minerally and floral on the aroma, and a good weight and a little bit of an oily texture, which is really good for pairing with food. Uh, white peaches, apricots, and tangerine, and also a little smoky aftertaste. So a little bit more complexity to the wine um, than the um, entry-level uh, uh, Trebbiano de Bruzzi. My rating is 90 points. The Trebbiano de Bruzzi was paired uh, uh, perfectly with a prawn duo. So you have, um, then it is a just started spot prawn season in Vancouver. So you have this almost ceviche style prawn, which I really liked, and then just a lightly cooked uh, prawn. Um, so I thought both of these were very successful um, in terms of matching the um, Trappiano de Bruzzi um, and really brought out the flavor in both the wine and the um, the uh, spot prawns really brought out the sweetness of the seafood on the wines really kind of give a little bit of a creamy texture to it and also brought out the smokiness in at least the Fonte Canale. Next wine is another really interesting wine that I don't see a lot. It's their Serrasuelo de Bruzzi uh, 2022. So Serrasuelo is kind of a rosé. It means, the word actually means cherry. Um, so it is a substantial rosé. Most rosés to me are very light and summery and not that substantial. They're great for just drinking on the patio, but really don't pair that well with a little bit more serious food. Um, this is different because the grape skins of Monte Pacino grape are a little bit thicker. Um, even that little bit of skin contact makes it a little bit more um, red, cherry red rather than rosé in terms of color. So it almost looks like a light red wine, like a Pinot Noir, but it is actually classified as a rosé. And therefore you get a little bit more, more intensity of flavor. So my notes is it's red cherry, pomegranate, and strawberry flavors and aromas. You had a bit more tannin than you see in rosé and a better mid palate than most rosés. Really liked it. Um, my score, 89 points. It was paired with a burrata tortelli, which is kind of a pasta, um, really nice and could that really uh, accentuates how this is a bit, bit more um, food wine that can pair with a little bit more substantial food, not just salads or light cheeses. Um, you know, I see this even pairing with pork, it was fine and really um, kind of opened my eyes about the whole genre of rosé wines. Next wine we had was the Montepulciano de Bruzzi 2022. This is kind of their basic or entry-level wine. It is available at BC Liquor Stores that is on sale this month, I think for about $26. Very nice um, and high quality uh, Montepulciano. There are some that are really um, not very well balanced and a little bit alcoholic. Um, where the alcohol content is too high, but I thought this was well balanced, a lot of intensity of flavors to counteract the alcohol content. So my notes on this was cherry, blueberry, oak, and smoke, medium tannins with good weight and intensity of flavors. My rating was 88 points. This was paired with some pasta. So it's a Garganelli duck ragu with smoked ricotta. Again, the intensity of the flavor of the pasta dish was quite um, heavy, but that matched very well with the Montepulciano. I thought um, it held up very well with this duck ragu uh, and the smoked ricotta. Then we started to go to higher end um, Tiberio Montepulciano de Bruzzi wines. And again, um, it's interesting for me. I didn't know they could make higher end quality, but um, I guess, I shouldn't have been surprised. So these are almost like single vineyard uh, offerings. So this next one is the uh, Montepulciano de Rozzi Archivio 2017. This is the only Tiberio wine that's aged in oak, about 30% oak. Um, a lot more intensity of flavor and a little bit more substantial in terms of the tannin and the body. So my notes on this was red cherry, smoke and licorice with violets and spice on the nose. 
really like the acidity. This is a little bit older vine, so that's why you get the complexity of flavors. Um, I think the average age is 65 year old vines, but it is drinking quite nicely right now. Probably could age another five years, uh, but it's in its drinking window. My uh, rating is 88 points. Wine was paired with a sausage stuffed morels in, on top of polenta. Um, again, the dishes that the Quartier made um, were very uh, complementary of the wines. I think they took a lot of um, care in the pairing. And some pairings are just kind of haphazard. These were really well thought out and I thought really complemented the wine and matched the um, texture, the intensity, the body, and the tannin level of the wine. So really liked the pairings. Last wine of the tasting was the Monto Pociano de Bruzzi Coli Rota 2018. So this is, I would say, their top end uh, Monte Pociano wine. Uh, again, a single vineyard offering. I like this one again, a um, little bit different than the um, last one, the Archivio. Uh, from my taste notes, white tropical fruit and sage on the nose. It has a bit of um, a kind of a peel, mandarin orange peel, which is kind of unique on the nose. On the palate, blackberries, tobacco, and earthiness really good acidity. The fruit was quite gushing on the palate uh, with a little bit of minerality. So I thought this was the best of the red wines of the night. Um, my notes or my rating is 89 points. All in all, all the wines were spectacular. And I this was paired with a beef short rib, uh, but I didn't get a picture of it, I forgot. But all in all, I thought the wines were really interesting, really eye-opening, really enjoyed the tasting really uh, food friendly and consumer friendly in terms of drinking uh, wines. Um, and some of them, like, I liked all of them. I liked the Pecorino, I liked the Sarasuala, probably my favorite was the Fonte Canale, but I liked all the wines. They, they were all very, very interesting wines. And um, it was a really fun time to taste these wines. Christiana is a wine lover by heart. Uh, she loves drinking wines and trying different things. So after we tasted her wines, I said, hey, let's keep drinking. I'd love to see your views. So we looked at the wine list at La Guarcia, which was really good. And so uh, we just picked something off the menu. So, and I, uh, we started to drink the uh, 2014 uh, Mascarella Mombravato. Um, viewers would know that I have previously drank a 2010 Mombravato and reviewed that and so um, just recently so I kind of have a good idea of the wine. Um, I thought this was a good vintage but uh, it wasn't as good I think as the 2010. Um, it was we just quickly decanted and had it so maybe it needed a little bit more time but I thought it was really in its drinking window. So my notes for this wine was strawberries, cherry and herbs on the pilot, palate with a slight metallic graphic finish. I think it's ready to drink now, but easily can go another seven years, and my rating was 93 points. But all in all, really wonderful night. Loved meeting Christiana Tiberio. Um, she's, um, her winery and her family's wineries are great. Very interesting, indigenous, distinct, and really um, wine lovers drinking wines. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy drinking.